What is up, my kings and queens and all in between? My name is Andrew Velasquez, and you're here for season two, you guys, 2024 of Mindful Artists Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I've honestly had such a really good time, and I have a really cool, awesome guest, legend himself, that I'll get into shortly. But I just wanted to remind you to please go on to our reviews. Give us those stars, those ratings, because the more you do that, the more likely others like yourselves will have a chance to listen to this in their algorithms. And if you are a creative person that's spiritual and practices mindfulness, email me at mindfulartist.podcast.gmail.com. Maybe you'll be a guest as well. And that song that you just heard, Mi Corazon, written by myself, produced by you guys, the legend himself. He's here, Aaron McLendon. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> this is the What's man up, that I've been man? talking about literally in every intro. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. All right, you guys. So who is Aaron McLendon? Aaron McLendon is a producer, drummer, and DJ from Santa Barbara, California. Upon receiving his master's degree from California Institute of Arts, McLendon lived in New York City and Los Angeles, where he amassed an electric performance resume, including Michael Buble, George Benson, Kamasi Washington. Terrence Howard, George Clinton, Thundercap, Terrace Martin, Taylor Eitzy, Christian Scott, Esperanza Spalding, Elder, Angela Moore of Fishbone, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox, and Grace Kelly's, amongst many others. As a producer, McLennan is currently signed with Peer Music and has worked with such artists as Lauv, Carly Hansen, Casey Abrams, Luna Ara, Jasmine Ash, Day One, Kelson and Camera Forbes. His collaborations with fellow producer Nick Block has garnered placements with such brands as Apple, Sephora, Facebook, and others. McLennan also creates original content and media for a roster of clients, including fitness, weights, fitness, heavyweights, body, formerly Beach Body, and Equinox. Mm -hmm. Most recently, he scored the forthcoming Sean T program, Dig Deeper. And yours truly, my Latino house track debut of Mi Corazon. <laughs> Bravo. Right. That, that is quite <laughs> the bio. Wow. I, I learned a little bit. I mean, I knew that you had such a great portfolio, but I didn't know the extents and the details. Congratulations. How does that feel to to hear back like your journey as a, as an artist? Oh, man. that First of all, that's a great intro, man. Thank you so much. Um, And it's such a pleasure to be here and to be chatting with you, my friend. It's been a while. Um, it's, you know, hearing, you know, it's December. And so it's, uh, you know, this is being filmed and recorded in December. Um, so it's yeah. the end of the year. Yeah. And you, you do that reflecting thing mm -hmm. at the end of the year where you look back and, and, and kind of do the tally of what went right, what didn't, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, your experiences, et cetera. So kind of in that reflective place it's really cool to hear like oh yeah that okay i did that that's that's cool i like i'm, I'm yeah. happy that i worked with those artists had that experience i mean it's all a bunch of magic seemingly that it comes together sometimes so it's yeah it, it's important to to be grateful for that and to you know yeah. i mean talk about being a mindful artist just being you know expressing that gratitude and 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 saying like to yourself uh, you know for for all the ups and downs and, and and everything that we everything in between that we deal with as artists i think it's really you know important to step back and just say you know thank you i'm really grateful we're really lucky to be able to do any of this and to live in Absolutely. society and be able to express ourselves and mm -hmm. and be able to continue to do this so so gratitude that's that's the main thing i feel yes yes you said it perfectly well, what about a little bit of the origins, like Baby Aaron McLendon? How, where did, <laughs> where did the artist, where was that birth? Where was that light spark? Like, where did you have your aha moment of like, this is the the career, this is the path that I need to experience? That's a great question. Um, well, I come from a musical family. Both my parents are musicians and music educators. You know, my dad was a professional opera singer um, until he went to the education. What? I did well, not know that. And, That's so cool. Yeah. He Father was the choir director at my, what's that? Father Operatica. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He was the choir director at my high school and he was That's the, uh, he founded the Santa Barbara Master Chorale and was the conductor of that for decades um, uh, and is now retired and enjoying his his time. And, and my mom taught elementary school music for 44 years. So 
Um, music was always around in my house when I was growing up. Um, we grew up singing. Um, you know, for instance, instead of saying grace at the table, it would be uh, uh, a song. You know, we'd no start way. Together with That's a song. so yeah, dumb. Not kidding. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, we that was that was a tradition of, of the house. So music was always there. Um, I started playing piano when I was a little kid and was encouraged to do that. But I didn't feel any type of passion for it whatsoever. I'm thankful that I had it. But yeah. um, when I, my parents said to me, look, you know, well, first of all, I quit piano when I was like a 10 or 11. And then my parents said, we want you to play an instrument. Uh, you can decide what it is, but we will pay for the lessons. We'll get you the instrument. Um, but you, but we really want you to do it. So I was thinking about guitar and drums. And then yeah. I saw the high school jazz. I was 13 and I saw the high school jazz band. So these kids a couple years older than me. And I saw the drummer and I was like, man, this looks like the like the best job ever. Like this guy looks like he's having yeah. so much fun. Looked like an octopus playing all these <laughs> different patterns. At also once. a and workout, too, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, some of the I mean, it's a lot of cardio. It's a lot of strength. Um, so I started playing drum lessons and um, had get, like really lucked out where when I was growing up, had a really amazing first drum teacher, shout out to Barry Birmingham. And then nice. um, after about a year and a half, he passed me off to another incredible drum teacher, a guru uh, up in Santa Barbara named Craig Thatcher. So I was with him for about four years. Um, and the and he was part of how it clicked when I decided to actually do this for a living and pursue this um, as a life goal and as a profession, because we were, you know, I used to do that thing where I'd like go with him to gigs and roadie for him and set up and nice. uh, uh, just see how it worked, you know? And how old so were you when a, that was happening? Uh, 15, 14, okay, 15. Cool. Yeah. Um, so there was one time when I was 15 and, uh, you know, we went to this gig and, um, you know, we were playing, he was playing a private party for the celebrity and, um, and I, it just seemed like a cool experience and, so finally, like we're driving home and 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 I, I said, so like, what do you do for a living? And he just looks at me and he's like, what are you talking about? And I, I, you know, play gigs like you just saw and I teach punks like you. And I was, and it clicked. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a second, you could you do can make this? money to ching. <laughs> so I can play drums and that's it. And so that's where it, so it was, it was then and there I decided to do it. And that was just the snowball effect that eventually led to, you know, Pursuing it full time, well, first practicing incessantly yeah. in high school, yeah, and then pursuing it full time and going into music school. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I love that. I mean, you you were surrounded with artistry, support, and yeah, just being able to express yourself and singing at the table instead of saying grace like that's so dope. Um, yeah. and then you had some amazing mentors and some teachers that encouraged you and. I'm sure you vocalize, you know, and you were open to feedback and wanted to to learn from your mistakes and your opportunities. Um, what was the hardest part of maybe figuring out like your style and where mm -hmm. that, you know, where that led you? Like, because there's, so, I mean, music is so broad. Like, there are so many different genres, and I love all genres of makeup, but there's some genres that really like hit home and hit the heart. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. like for me, it's always house because that's like the heartbeats and which is why i wanted to call my first track me what fun so sorry go okay. ahead what do you what do you where was that um where did that journey like help you with your style well exactly like you you know how'd you get into house music right like what was it it was you were i mean we've talked about it a little it bit was a, you were... was, it was around me i mean it was oh yeah. well you know what mom mom in the yeah. 80s playing house and disco from the 70s so that yeah. naturally went into like it was just all around me and then being a club kid in the 90s as well so yeah and like did you ever have a moment where you thought maybe i should get in the house or did it just happen and you it was because you were just you just loved it okay i, I was obsessed with djs all the djs that were the basically the hardcore house djs and from the 90s like richard humpty vision armin van helden uh yeah. dj irene bad boy bill um Frankie Knuckles like and I had this deck of three tapes cassettes 
and I would have a blank one and then two other ones for my favorite. And I would pretend I was DJ Drew and like mix the beats and try to merge them together just on a tape deck, not even like a real, you know what I mean? That's so awesome. But, but yeah, I've always loved just the house music, I guess the adrenaline of it, the adrenaline of it and how it makes me yeah. feel alive for sure. Yeah. So it was the same thing on my end. It was the, mm-hmm. the, it was just the music that I was passionate about. So when I started yeah. playing drums, um, I started, you know, I started playing drums like the, I guess it was kind of like drum music, like, you know, for instance, you know, Nirvana had Dave Grohl on drums, who's an incredible drummer. Hell yeah. And mm-hmm. Soundgarden, the, you know, had an incredible drummer. Mm-hmm. So I was into that grunge music already and like that. And then around the same time, what which was so cool about MTV at the time is it had like, they they were so eclectic. Like it would play like yeah. Nirvana and all of a sudden like the next video would be, you know, a nothing but a G thing by Dr. Dre. And so yeah. I'm like, that beat. So, so I start playing that beat. And what's that? Yeah. So that got me into hip hop. So nice. all of a sudden I'm like into grunge and into hip hop. And I wasn't like, oh, okay, these are two diametrically opposed styles. And I should, you know, maybe I should choose one. It was, <laughs> you know, this is all really. This so all it made you feel good. Me. Exactly. Yeah. And I got really, you know, I got heavily, heavily into jazz and, and in fact, you know, majored in the style in college. So it, it, it because it was through the drums, it was playing jazz was such a, uh, you know, kind of cathartic experience on drums. And, yeah. it, was, and it was so inventive and, um, you know, just just creative. So mm-hmm. I got I got really into that. It helped me channel my energy. I had a lot of energy as a kid. I was really into like you know i just was the kid that was always running around and, and, hyper. and acting in hyper yeah yeah and so it channeled that into the into something artistic so it was all that and then you know through the years it's just continued with with uh you know through through you know djing and production especially mm-hmm. through production it's been you know just just general pop music you could say acoustic music of all different styles i mean i can really find beauty in any kind of style of music at this point um obviously yeah. i have my likes and my dislikes like everybody else but mm-hmm. i tend to look less at genre and more at just what the artist is saying and and how it makes you feel you know and that's yeah. a very individual thing absolutely so, and yeah. then so there wasn't i'm curious a, go ahead sorry Oh, I was just gonna say it wasn't a it wasn't a decision like I think I'll now get into this. It was the same as you and most other people. I just felt a passion for it. Life experience is kind of what guided you to navigate where you were gonna adapt your style, basically. Um, yeah. I'm curious to know when did the drum when did the drummer turn to the producer? Sorry, when did the drummer oh. turn into the producer? Well, the I mean, it, it, it the journey really started uh you know like it i mean i guess about 12 14 years ago um you know 2010 2009 10 um but before that as a drummer you kind of have to have a production mindset because also, okay you know when you when you go to do a recording for instance you have to think about things like okay i'm gonna play the snare on this beat i'm gonna have the hi-hat then i'm gonna move to the cymbal for the chorus of the song and you Mm -hmm. think about building a part in that way so it it was you know uh, already something that was you know in my mind and had like a i had kind of like a very 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 basic understanding of what that meant obviously the bug kind of bit me and i started thinking about i started writing more songs and then that led into producing more songs um and getting into the you know the nice. giant universe of it so that was it was about 14 years ago very cool so it sounds almost like you're a sous chef and you're just putting all these different ingredients of the recipe to make the main dish and that that's kind of like how production is where you pick apart all the different instruments and part of the, yeah. the dynamics of each song and what's going to make them unique super cool yeah. and then do you i know that you went to cal arts and so did your wife who we yeah. love angel mclendon oh, also yeah my like third cousin from the Vasquez family because I'm Velasquez and she's originally Vasquez. Yeah. Um, and then Johnny went to um who actually closed out season one, my husband, Johnny W mm-hmm. closed out season one of my Florida's podcast. Did you guys go to school together at the same time or was it different times? It was at the same time. We overlapped by a few years. Um Angel knew Johnny because they had a mutual friend Travis, who I also knew. 
but I didn't, um, so we were at the same time. I didn't know Johnny that well, um, but we were, we did overlap. Angel did. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And then obviously we all reunited in Los Angeles and just became yeah. besties and had to collab with any possible way that we possibly could. I mean, I Angel and Johnny pursuing the fitness industry and then I was always talking to you about music and to some degree and I just knew that I didn't know that one day we were going to collaborate so how how was that experience a year ago when we uh collaborated to create my my song Mi Corazon oh man yeah we have to talk about this I mean it it was incredible you know um first of all I've done you know I I, I do a lot of work for for clients for corporate clients like like you mentioned Beachbody Equinox in the in the fitness world that's a lot of dance music and whatnot of, of varying varying styles but it was so much fun to to and it was an honor to, to do it with you to to oh. take this vision and to do something that was that was personal and and something that that was part of your artistic vision so i mean there's a there's a lot to unpack from it but i mean how how was it you know how was the experience for you how was how was making that track uh, I'm so grateful. I, I was so. It was honestly little ten year old Andrew pretending he was a TJ all over again, but it, like <laughs> yeah. it, it coming to fruition with an actual producer, and to just like hear, you know, the words that I dedicated to my mom, who is the reason why I'm the person that I am, and for her to yeah. have witnessed it before she passed away is just the best gift I could have ever asked for like i'm gonna get emotional thinking about it yeah it's yeah it's one of those bookmarks for sure like i'm good if i i don't want to die obviously but if like i something were right. to happen like i would feel uh accomplished because you were part of that and i'm so forever grateful for that to continue that I, maybe we can do another one in the future or like a remix or something i don't know like i see absolutely i see something there <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot. We have a lot of there too that we could we could do this. You know, a remix. We could totally change the style up and make it. You know, because the song is an amalgamation of all these different influences. Anyway, so yeah. we could totally yeah. do something that was just like straight up. You know, that that's more like house or tech house or deep house. Mm -hmm. We could do like the you know the more could do like a mumba tone reggaeton. Yeah, yeah. Remix, All whatever, of it. I mean, now that I'm like in the southeast with more Caribbean influence, I, I, yeah, I definitely uh, was was very moved by Latino house, but also Afro house and yeah, uh, spoken word. Because I, I wish I was a singer. Are you a singer? Can you actually like keep it? I tune? mean, I, yeah, but I can't. I don't <laughs> do it professionally. But I'll, okay, okay. I'll, I'll get my, you know, I'll, I can, I can convey ideas. Um, yeah. Gotcha. But I'm not a I'm not a singer by trade. Neither am I. I'd be singing all the time. Johnny is a singer though. He can he can definitely belt. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, well, okay. This leads me into some really great questions about just how your craft has been throughout your journey, and maybe this is a more current question. But what practices or routines do you have in place to nurture your creativity and spirituality while running your business? That's a great question because yeah, you're like when you say running your business as as we move into adulthood and we need to run a business in order to mm -hmm. live in society, um, that is a skill set. But I think the foundation of that still needs to be in your own, you know, mindfulness, your own um, spiritual practice, whatever that means. Everyone's is, is different. So mine yeah. is mine first starts with meditation. Um, uh, a short story is that I had really bad tendonitis in my wrist from playing eight hours a day when I was yeah. 18 Dang. and it was diagnosed and it's like no cure, you know, that I got, you know, had, was lucky to be able to uh, have like, an, you know, MRIs and all kinds of diagnostics done. And um, basically there's nothing they could do uh, other than like a, a cortisone shot and surgery. And, and I didn't do surgery. Um, I did do the shot and that didn't help. And uh, my first semester of school, I was going to school in a suburb of New York and um, I discovered meditation. A friend of mine who was a piano player had, had, had been practicing. So I just, I didn't have a book or anything. I just started doing some, some mindfulness exercises, mainly just 
of breath awareness and yeah that and i and i started imagining like energy coming from the energy center you know mm -hmm. my core mm -hmm. radiating to my hands and and what that ended up being actually is um something called biofeedback you know um have you heard of that before i have yeah the mind yeah, the human so, mind is a powerful thing mm -hmm. yeah so that was that helped with circulation control and so that and also just like you know to get my myself more centered you know especially as an 18 year old so it started with meditation um and it's still there i really try to do it every day um even if it's just for five minutes, um, I really try not to skip on it, even when I have to get up really early when there's a lot going on, which is, you know, for most of us often. And um, uh, that, so I'd say that that's number one, you know, just getting back to meditation. And then uh, obviously working out is really helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, I work, I, I you know, my, my biggest clients right now are in the fitness industry. So I, yeah. I, I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working with fitness, you know, videos and music all yeah. the time. So, um, it it's all around me. you. You can't escape it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, you know what I mean? Like I would, you know, I was working on Shanti's new program and I'm like hearing his voice wow. in my head when I'm not even on the screen, you know, I, I should tell him that, but you know, it was, it was motivational. So sure. and you hear, you hear that motivation every day and inspired you to do something, even if it's just a little bit every day um yeah. you know i find that consistency is more important than necessarily quantity um like you know i'd rather yeah. do five minutes ten minutes a day than absolutely do an hour on friday but then skip five days so mm -hmm. i love that also i'm so grateful that we both have partners that are really passionate about fitness and share that commonality yeah. so we can hold each other accountable and it, i feel like it's a little easier for partners to have that in the household and just continue that maintenance, you know, with each other. And Angel, she's a boss. Like her yoga classes, oof. Okay. Like next, as as strong as Johnny's spin classes are and his metabolic conditioning, Angel's class, uh, yoga classes. I mean, it's yeah. like church. It really. Oh yeah. I've really had some out of body experiences. It's next level. Like talk about meditation to a thousand. You know what I mean? Like it's. It's really something else. Yeah. 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 She's she's a master teacher and, and you know, now she's over at Pilates anytime and yoga anytime and, and 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 is killing it over there. And it's just really inspiring to to you know those to see those classes and to experience those classes. Those kind of group fitness classes, you know, with Angel and 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 John, you know, Johnny's cycle class mm -hmm. is still the, the the last one we did in LA, um, the most uh -huh. last recent one, I guess what was that two it was a few years ago. Two years um, ago, yeah. Was it two years ago? Yeah. He, uh -huh. he, uh, that was one of my favorite classes of all time. So it, yeah, it I, still resonates with me. And and, I, and it's like a great performance. It's like watching a great art, uh, yeah. you know, musical artist at work or yeah, a DJ. 100%, 100%. Well, it's because they both uh, prepare and, you know, research how the music is going to resonate with the human body and where, where they're at at that time with you know their breath work with their heartbeat how much it's elevated so they're aware of what the human is experiencing through through that journey and yeah. i love that they're, there's they're both consistent about it having like a beginning a middle and an ending and it's like ah it's at the end you just feel so enlightened and talk about you know being mindfulness um cool yeah. cool cool I was going to ask if you can share any tips or advice for aspiring entrepreneurs like yourself looking to incorporate more creativity and spirituality into their work. Into their work? Yeah. I mean, I think one, um, I think having your own project that's independent of clients, independent of, um, you know, anyone else's, uh, you know, expectations is important, you know. Um, I've been guilty of not doing that. And then I realized I, I miss it. And so, you know, right now I'm working on my own music yeah. concurrently with Hell everything yeah. that I'm doing for other clients. Yeah, you have to do it. I mean, I, I'm yes. really lucky that I'm also involved in some projects with some people I'm collaborating with. And so there's a creative element there. But mm -hmm. I'd say that first and foremost, just make sure you have something that is yours and that is independent of everything else. Like making an art, making a living as an artist is a real gift. Mm -hmm. Um 
it, depending on what that is, um, you might only be doing your own music. Like if you're, you know, an artist and you're signed to a label or you're a painter sure. and putting your stuff up in galleries, um, or you might be working with clients and helping them realize their vision as, as producers do. Um, it just really depends on what it, but I'd say always make sure you have something that you can put your wholehearted creativity into no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. No, I love that. And I, I agree 100% because yeah, I'm a very sensitive guy. And so I, I <laughs> constantly have to have a project of some sort to keep those creative juices flowing. You know, it's like muscle memory. It's yeah. going to help one project going to help with the next project. And some of it, you know, might be just uh, a learned experience to benefit, you know, a future situation that eventually will manifest into something larger. You never know. Um, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Okay. And my last question for this segment is, how do you measure success in both your creative and entrepreneurial pursuits? And do they ever o overlap in any way? Yeah, definitely. Um well, I mean, success is like, you know, okay, so our traditional version is obviously like, you know, financial success. Like I have mm -hmm. X amount of money, whatever that means. Um, and I think that's a little bit part of it. You know, I'm, I've been broke. I've, I've done the starving artist thing. And yeah, um, we and all have. <laughs> yeah. And there's, you know, obviously there's like romance there, but there's also yeah. the brutal reality of like, you know, sweating about your bills. And so, um, yeah. And so I'd say that like success, even just getting past that point where you're like, okay, my bills are met, um, mm -hmm. is success. You know, having the space and the freedom and the time to make art and to have, you know, the ends met by whatever means that, that, that you think should be met, I think is success. Um, you know, my, I think my ultimate version of success is I envision a life that I want and then I go for it by whatever you know avenue that presents itself and, and you know sometimes i know how i'm gonna get it sometimes you know sometimes i don't uh but i'm open to it mm -hmm. um so i love I that i always have a goal yeah i yeah i mean it's it's one of those things where like i always have a goal and there's always something new on the horizon um mm -hmm. but you know the where i'm at now was a dream of mine years ago so yeah. by that measure, I can step back and say like that's success, and that's how I measure it. Absolutely, um, well said. I'd say that from a from a creative, like purely creative way, I, it's does you know strictly. I'm, I'm speaking strictly about music now. It okay. does it sound like what I hear in my head? Mm. You know, okay. If I'm making a, if I'm making a record, there's there's it's in my head, right? If I could just like. Do you dream about it? Rarely. I mean, it's not one okay. of, you know, I, I, I'm sometimes I've woken up with some dreams. Uh, I mean, with some ideas from dreams, but not, I yeah. haven't really dreamt about it. Um, I haven't, I mean, I haven't created too much from dreams, um, but it's just in my head, like in the way you can vision, um, you know, I guess in the way it's a daydream, you know, you're, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll hear. It's a vision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, I'll hear the totality of it in my head. So I think that, a lot of the skill sets of production are being able to take all of that and like make it a sound recording and actually succeed in presenting that. And so I think that would, for me, that's how I measure the success with my, with my records and with, with nice. music in general. Is it what I'm hearing? I love it. So yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I, the idea originally, um, when we collaborated came from just to give a little behind the scenes for the people that wonder like how that even came yeah. about. I, I published a book and created a makeup palette and obviously through social media, you're having to create reels or trailers or little sizzles. And it kept, you know, asking to use either copyright or copy royalty free music or someone else's that was available. And I'm yeah. thinking like, wait a minute, why don't even, why don't I have a song and I'm talking to you about it? And you're like, bro, let's just make a song. Like, let's just do it. Yeah. And <laughs> we got on Zoom and we used the garage band and I had a different microphone and literally took the book, read it and 
and then Aaron did his magic, and there it was. It took, I mean, it took like a month or so or something like that. Yeah, something long. like that. We had mm -hmm. we had a couple of iterations where, um, you know, we we come up with some styles, and mm -hmm. um, you know, you send me a copy of the book, and right. I was getting inspiration from that. But I think a watershed moment, which is one you've shared before um, through your socials, is that point where we were having a conversation like this, and I, yeah, would, and I, I said, "Is there something from the book that?" you know, that's, that's meaningful that you want to really express specifically. And then you mentioned the, 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 the forward and yeah. then you read it. And yeah. I had it. Was, a, that was never an idea. Like that was not an intention. So that literally came, uh, just uh, us volleying off each other and you suggesting it. And that I'm so grateful for that because it was like the best part of it to make it even more personal and yeah. have that like testimony of just full circle, you know what I'm saying? So really yeah. really cool and then <clears throat> now i'm like dj aaron mclinden with my microphone on but <laughs> I know. my podcast and inter interviewing other creators i'm so grateful like this is so cool it's been such a blessing and really fun experience and for 2024 you guys i have a new segment that i can't wait to introduce to you the library is open yeah! <laughs> because reading is what Fundamental. There you have it, darling. All right, you guys. So this segment is called The Library is Open. And this is a great opportunity for our guests to talk about their favorite book. And maybe it's audio version. Maybe it's one that they've read in the past or you're currently reading. And what are your top three reasons why you enjoy this book? So go for it. Okay. Well, the first, it's an audio book because I've been listening to it while I drive. Um, so it's a book called The Big Leap by a guy named Gay Hendricks. And it's, I guess it would fall into the self-help category um, and kind of like the, you know, the esoteric power of the mind and the subconscious and the, um, you know, the, kind of how your subconscious affects your reality. Uh, it came out in 2010. So it's mm -hmm. been around for, you know, 13, 14 years now. And it's been really inspirational to me. So the top three reasons, um, well, I didn't think I needed needed three so here I'll, I'll do my best so number one is is it gets you uh to think about your life um in terms of like your your uh potential so you have your zone in the to paraphrase you have your zone of mediocrity which are things you don't do well your zone of excellence which are things you do very well and then your zone of genius which is the things that are very unique to you and that are just really special to your life and something that you excel at. And so ultimately, and I don't know if zone of me mediocrity is actually the first one. I might be totally wrong. Um, it's okay. It's, I think it sounds, it yeah. sounds like a good flow though. Yeah. 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 It's, but it's basically, it starts that, you know, it's, it's, it's basically that level and, and mm -hmm. zone of genius is a, is, is a, a place where, as as an artist, it's really useful because you know he applies it to like everything from you know uh, our personal life to business pursuits to art. Very cool. And he has and he uses examples from different artists and and uh, over the years. Um, so I think nice. the first thing, so number one would be that it 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 gets it gets me personally to think about what Life's potential. Yeah, where's my potential and and what am I what am I doing that's really like making me excited and mm -hmm. um and ultimately those are the things that as an artist are, are where you can live your best life and where you can you know live the, the be, live the dream you know actually live live your own dreams or, or, or doing the art and mm -hmm. the you know the activities that that you feel are valuable to yourself and get you excited you know get you yeah. get you up in the morning so it's one of those books I love that. that does that yeah. So, I mean, and then I'd say number two is it helps recognize places where you don't, uh, you know, where you're putting your own roadblocks up, yeah. you know, um, mm -hmm. and it helps with that. And then number three, I'd say it just as, serves as a inspirational tool to, to hear other people's stories about how okay. they overcome their own roadblocks and pushed on through to their fullest potential because i think that's, that's one of the things that, yeah it is and i think it's one of the things that that as an artist we all anyone who has a, a, an inclination towards towards art at all 
wants to live their their fullest potential you know whether they yeah. know it or not i feel i don't feel like there's any artist who's like i only want to paint you know half-ass yeah. paintings you know i only want to make half-ass songs like you want to put yourself into it and do something that's meaningful so um yeah, that book's been really valuable and helping this is the second time i've gone through it so i'm that's where i'm at right now okay so you you've read it and heard it more than once and uh tell us again yeah. what's the name of it and the author it's called the it's called the big leap and it's by Gay Hendrix. Love it. Yeah, uh, yeah. What I'm hearing, the takeaways are taking risks, stepping out of your comfort zone, oh, yeah. um, challenging yourself to reflect and have that awareness of where you're at and where you see yourself in a few months and how you can evolve and grow into the artist that you really want to become. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah, no, those are all things that we practice here in my Florida's podcast. So thank you so much <laughs> yes, for sharing sir. that. You're um welcome. my uh current book that which I, I always like to have like a three rotation. Um and I love the paper or the ones on the iPad just because it's easier. And so I would have to say it's Matt Kahn. That's the author, <clears throat> also a spiritual healer, and the title is called Everything is Here to Help You. And it's it's a little it's a little avant garde, it's a little out there. So it's if it's difficult for someone to think outside the normal cookie cutter box, this mm -hmm. might sound a little too fantasy for you, but it's it's real. It's uh, along the lines of like the secret. I don't know if you know remember that book, uh, of course. Rhonda, Rhonda, yeah. And so it's just changed my life. Like I discovered it a long time ago, and I, I continue to go back to it. Um, highly recommend it. It's it's really good. Um, very cool. So yeah, that was my first time doing the libraries open. We're going to continue this Yay! journey on season two, <laughs> 2024, and just share some insight and some really cool tools that are helping, you know, our viewers or guests and then see where that takes us. Um, cool. And then tell us what is next? Like what is next for Aaron McClendon? Where do you, I know you're going to pursue the YouTube and your own music. Um, and we talked a little bit about this in the past when we were working on Mi Corazon. But what's next? What's next for Aaron McClendon? Um, yeah, I am. So 24, I'm uh, working on my own music. Um, I've got some singles in the can. Um, we'll probably, I, and I still haven't decided whether, if I'm just going to start releasing singles or I'm going to have put them all together in an EP and release mm -hmm. singles in anticipation of an EP. So I'm still working it out. But yeah, yeah. Um, the important thing is I'm doing it. I um, had a great Hell session yeah. with an artist, uh, with uh, an artist that I love. I had a session um, with him and I'll, and I'll reveal everything down the road, but um, yeah, gotcha, it's, gotcha. it's all, it's, it's going well and um, I'm excited. So that's the I'm first thing. And then, thank you. Thank you. Um, and you know, me core doing that record together last year, that was a big inspiration where and I told you this, I said, I've, yeah need to make more of my own records you know because that was such a special experience and um collaboration and, and so thank it lit you. a fire under me as well thank you it, it, it helped <laughs> it helped with with that process and then I, um i say we're mirrors it's just we're reflecting the light to one another to continue to inspire and help others and just imagine if everybody did a little bit of that like how beautiful would this world be you know no uh, it'd be amazing man yeah that's i completely agree um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing is I'm working on a, on a project um, with uh, I'm collaborating with two friends down in Los Angeles with uh, about the uh, that's a whole YouTube uh, okay. collaboration thing. I don't I can't talk about it yet because nothing's right. like said in nothing's really been said. It's OK. It's you a can large give us some project. teasers. Yeah, we'll I'm really back. I'm really I'm really, really excited about it. It's huge. It's something I've never done before. Dang. And um, that's all I'm going to say. All right. All right. I'm so it'll be, you. But we're going to launch. Thank you. But we're going to launch the next this in, in 24. So that's it. So dope. Congratulations. I cannot wait. Thank you well earned well deserved all the things i mean this is what i'm talking about you guys taking what brings you joy your passion what feeds your soul making it your career does not happen overnight but you continue to persevere you continue to trust the process and ask for mentorship come back and listen to useful tools like mindful artist podcast and you'll figure it out it'll it'll come yeah. down the road you just have to know that each opportunity is going to get you to the next level 
if you trust it. So those hard times that you're struggling, that you're eating a cup of noodles and you're a struggling <laughs> artist, it's okay. It's going to be worth it. One day you're going to come back yeah. and you're going to serve a full, you know, full four course meal for your, for your guests. So it's just yeah. having the patience for that and trusting the process. This is your time. 2024 is for you. It's you've helped so many others like myself. This is going to happen. So just go for it. Balls out. <laughs> Balls out indeed. And you know, I, I, thank you, man. And you, you know, it's, it's so inspiring chatting with you as well. I mean, you know, you've inspired me, my friend is um, when we first met, you were doing that photo shoot for angel uh, for my wife. And um, yeah, I just saw how you were, you know, just engrossed in your craft and your, you know, when you were doing makeup and hair for her and just and yeah. just how in it you were and, and, you know, how you brought her vision and the photographs that she was doing to life, but directing her that day. And, and, and it was inspiring for me. So thank you. Wow. I've never heard of that. That's really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, yeah, I just, it's a passion. It's a, it's a way of bringing someone's, you know, vision and evoking that through, through the power that I have with my hands, and you do that yeah. with, with your clients and your and your musicians. So, I'm just I'm so grateful. This is like full circle for all of us. So, we can just it continue is. to celebrate each other's successes and uplift each other. And you guys, if you can do that for one another, this is how we make a difference in the world. So, thank, thank you, you, Aaron. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. This leads me into. Dun, 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 wrapping up mindful artists rapid cues so i have three questions wherever you're at intuitively don't think about it too hard you just okay. hear the question and answer so question number one Aaron mcclendon who is your hero and why oh my god okay um well I have a lot of heroes. So the one that just comes to mind from an artistic level, because sure. because uh, his personal life was all over the place, but artistically, Miles Davis, because hey. he was a not he, he was not afraid to take risk. He was not afraid to to take huge leaps. In fact, and completely change his style around. He did this like repeatedly over his career. Even as he got into middle age, he was still pushing the boundaries. He was the Picasso of music for sure. So absolutely artistically, he's a hero. He, I mean, he's changed the industry for sure. And oh, you, yeah. you can say a personal hero too, if you like, I'm okay with that. Oh man. Uh, personal hero. Um, if you want to, you don't have to. I, there's so many. I am like, <laughs> I'm on the I understand. I say, I, you know, you know, you know, I'd say my, my, my parents are personal heroes of mine yeah. because they, they raised me with love and they, you know, supported your craft. I'll always supported. You know, I have so many friends that, that were not supported by their families or yeah. just maybe the families were indifferent and, and that's fine too. It's just, it's like, I'm really grateful that they were supportive of me and, yeah. and encouraged it all the way, including today. What are their names? Pam and Phil. Shout out to Pam and Phil. Shout Thanks out to Pam such and a great Phil. gentleman. <laughs> great artiste. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. This one might be a little hard, but I I mean, we'll see. Question yeah. number two for wrapping up my part is Rapid Cues. What is your favorite music album of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. You're oh like a musician. Oh, my God, man. That's impossible. Because um, there's like a picture of this. You're on a deserted island. There's nobody else there. And you yeah. have one disc man and one CD to repeat for the rest of your life. What is that album? Oh, man. this like, Even <laughs> even still, it just depends on the day. You know, because you're, you're, you're musical. I'll just I'll name something. But I just want to because say. Because you're a musician, music. I'll give you top three albums. How about that? Oh, my God. Even that is like, <laughs> is just... <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, I got to go with Desert Island, obviously. So, um, shit. Um, the I'm a, I've always been a huge Beatles fan. I love what they nice. did. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even even choosing one of their albums, but I'd say like I love. I mean, I think Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band was a was an amount like a, a apex of their own songwriting and production, inventiveness, and everything like that. So, I'd say. Time. 
they're way ahead of their time, and they and they invented all of these studio techniques. Things like sampling came from them that never mm-hmm. existed before. Studio recording techniques. Um, so yeah, that right. was one of them. Um, I'd say John Coltrane's "A Love Supreme," which is a influential jazz album, Very is cool. definitely one of my favorites. Um, after that, man, I love <laughs> I love Radiohead's "Kid A." Yes, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, the, the voice, I mean, that, the the whole thing. That one just resonated with me, like you know, uh, when it came out, and also still. So, but you know, there's so many, man. There's like Wu Tang's first album. There's Dr. Dre's The Chronic. There's like, I mean, it's like I don't even yeah, know, I know. where. There's, I was listening <laughs> to Nevermind the other day, like on vinyl. Like, I mean, dude, so it's, good. Yeah, that's a tough question. I need so to get into vinyl have, this year. Yeah. Do it, man. I mean, it's fun because you, you know, you get the tangible. The nostalgia the of it. Yeah, like there's something tactile about like you pull this record out of a mm-hmm. out of a thing the size of a small poster and you're like putting yeah. it on, you know, you get a, you get your system together. You can have like that whole yeah. experience where you have to listen to an album. You can't, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's kind of like how I'm thinking of Mindful Artist podcast. Like season one was 12 episodes, 12 tracks. And now let's see where season two takes us um and that's how i was introduced to music as well i mean on the original vinyl record with my mom in pasadena walking on the street with her little four-year-old andrew picking out you know donna summer madonna eurythmics and the 80s was just that was just it good choices you're special that's why i let you pick pick uh three three albums um, thank you yeah that was not rapid fire at all <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i gotta help a brother out because you're a musician so it's all good um all right final question for wrapping up mindful artist rapid cues and question number three is what is your favorite quote of all time oh my god man i should have i should have had something prepared um Man, I don't, I don't have, I can't think of something right off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll say, um, th- there's a long, there's a couple quotes from the Hagakure, the, the Samurai Manual that are really amazing. Um, but I would have to get it out and, and like read it because I don't have it memorized. So I'll say one that I, that actually has uh, been on the top of my mind, and this might be even corny, but I don't care. I'll just do it anyway. It's from that that uh, movie from. I guess the late eighties, early nineties called Feel of Dreams with Kevin Costner. And he has a simple okay. quote in there. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. And it just means follow your dreams. Mm-hmm. It just means, you know, I mean, there's a context from the movie, but, but what that quote means, if you build it, they will come. It means like you do make your art and don't yeah. be afraid to do it. Yeah. Just, I, I... you know, trust the process. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's not corny at all. I think I think it's actually originally Noah's art when he, he created the art. That's that's what he said. This is like iconic. So I mean, yeah, I know that I'm sure will resonate with a lot of people. And it's it's true. If you build it, if you don't take the risks, if you, you know, don't mess mess up, like you have to have mistakes. You have to have these opportunities to learn to discover your true potential. So yeah, trusting the process yeah. is the way to do it and just having patience. Thank you so much, Aaron McClendon. You're the man. This was so cool. Um, what? Thank where you. can we find you and, and support your art and do all the things? Uh, right now, my main uh, avenue, you can go to my, my website, mcclendonmusic.com um, to find out more about me and what I'm doing. And also my Instagram handle, Aaron McClendon Music, at Aaron McClendon Music uh, is where you can find me as well. And that's where I'll be posting um, new uh, creations and, and new collaborations that are coming up uh, in 24. All the things that you tease us about. So we get a little sneak peek yeah. of it. You get to know about it, but you can't actually hear it yet. You're going to have to come back and I'll put everything in the description. You guys, my kings and queens and all in between, this has been another episode of your one-stop shop, all things mindfulness, creativity, and being an entrepreneur. Uh, make sure that you give us the stars and reviews, share this somebody with share this with somebody that you love that you know it will resonate with and until the next time thank you so much aaron everybody out there make an impact in somebody's life much love and light to you all i'll see you at the next episode take care everybody bye, aaron. bye.